It is another first here for us at TV5. It is feedback live for the very first time. And uh, we have a few different topics for you tonight. We're talking about a new drug and alcohol campaign here at Clarion University, a new CD that's being released, and Enron. Feedback starts now. February 7th. Good evening. I'm Mark Tesfatakis. And uh, as I said, a new first for TV5. Uh, this program has never, ever aired uh, live, and uh, we will be airing live from now until May. Certainly a first every Tuesday and Thursday with you at 7.30, right after TV5 News Live. Uh, coming up tonight, uh, some of you may have seen these College Isn't About Alcohol promotions around. We are going to be speaking about that tonight. What are these promotions about? Uh, and how can you get some of the free stuff they have? That's probably what you really want to know. That's coming up in a little bit. Also, someone all here from Clarion University, Dr. Tony Vega from the Earth Science Department, has released a CD. Now, my question is, what's an Earth Science professor uh, putting out a CD for? We're going to talk to him about that coming up later in the show. But now we're going to get back to a segment that I have not done for quite some time. Uh, for the last few months, I have not done what was uh, generally called my rant segment. I didn't feel it was appropriate in the wake of, of September 11th, and I had not done it uh, all the way through December, and I am back tonight doing it and in full force. Um, you saw it, at the, it was the lead story on tonight's TV5 News, Enron. Uh, a lot of the Enron executives came to Congress today, and they pled the fifth. And, uh, really makes it hard for Congress to get all the details they want in this investigation. We're going to show you again right now a story that was aired on TV5 News from our Washington correspondent, Skip Lozier. Enron executives, past and present, appeared under oath on Capitol Hill Thursday, but some didn't say much. Mr. Chairman, on the advice of counsel, I will respectfully decline to answer that question. Based on the protection afforded me under the Constitution of the United States, Will you invoke your Fifth Amendment rights in response to all of our questions here today, Mr. Bai? Yes, I will. Based on my right under the Fifth Amendment to the United States Constitution not to be a witness against myself. You Committee members weren't happy with the responses. One accused them of engaging in bizarre transactions, that even some Enron board members plundered millions at the expense of the company, its stockholders, and employees. Rise and raise your right hands. Former Enron Chief Executive Officer Jeffrey Skilling was willing to talk. Documents released by the committee show that he did not sign off on many of the questionable deals. Committee members believe that means he was trying to avoid being linked to them. While I was at Enron, I was not aware of any financing arrangements designed to conceal liabilities or inflate profitability. Skilling claims he is devastated by what ultimately happened at Enron because he says too many people have been hurt. Skilling says he never did anything to hide Enron's financial troubles from anyone. In Washington, I'm Skip Losher. All right, that was Skip Losher from our Washington Bureau. Well, what do I think of this? Well, I, from the beginning, um, it's, been, uh, it's been quite a story. It was not played up very much when we first started hearing about it around Thanksgiving because, well, at first it wasn't a real television story. You may have read it in some newspapers, but it wasn't covered much on television. Uh, but now it's big. And, and one of the big questions that has been going through my mind and through a lot of lawmakers' minds, pundits' minds, th those who have been thinking about this is, is this, what's the story here? Is this a political story? Or is this just another corporate story, uh, uh, something going wrong with a corporation? And I think what uh, the issue here is, if you look at it, Enron bought a good bit of this government. If you look at how much th they donated to 
both Democrats and Republicans, this is not a partisan uh, issue, they certainly donated lots of money, especially to a lot of the politicians in Texas. But if you look at it, Congress doesn't seem to be too happy with Enron, so it looks like the government that Enron bought isn't really working for them. Uh, and I think it's rather interesting how the story is being played. A lot of times I see it being played as a very political story, whereas it doesn't seem to be, even though Enron has donated all this money, it's not about politics, it's about what this company did and in, in freezing some of its uh, stockholders out of being able to pull out of their, uh, to pull money out of the stock while some top executives were still able to. So I think we need to focus a little bit more on the story, get our bearings, what should we be paying attention to here? In every story, I always think we need to look at what is the lesson? What's the lesson here? What can we learn from Enron? Uh, should we learn about the politics of it or we, should we learn about the corporate side of it? I think we need to take a harder look at the corporate side of it before we start playing into the politics. That's all I have to say about that. What we're going to do right now is we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to be talking about alcohol and college, some things that uh, have always gone together, at least those two words always seem to go to, together. Is that a fair assessment? Stay with us. Feedback continues after the break. This portion of the programming was brought to you by the Clarion Bull Arena, located on Route 322, one mile east of Clarion. Bull Arena offers rock and bull every Friday and Saturday night, and a game room with eight pool tables and arcade games. Bull Arena also offers bumper bowling for kids' birthdays and league play for adults. Call 764-3471. Again, that's 764-3471. On September 11th, America faced terrorist attacks of the worst kind. Innocent lives were lost, and a sad cloud was cast over this great nation. These acts were intended to cause fear among all Americans, including our children. But we cannot let that happen. There are things we can do to help our kids. Talk with them. Listen to them. Tell them they're safe and that they're loved. God bless you and God bless America. But I do want to hit on these do things. Do you want complete coverage of local, state, national, and international news as it happens? Good evening, everyone, and welcome to TV5 News Live. Today. Tune in to Clarion's yeah, very own TV5 News Live for complete coverage of the Clarion area and our world. TV5 News crews join with crews from the world's news leader, CNN, provide complete coverage of the day's events. With advanced satellite capabilities, TV5 News can bring you the latest news as it happens. So tune in every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday evenings for Clarence TV 5 News Live. Welcome back to Feedback. I'm Mark Despotakis. A lot of times, um, college is portrayed as something with a lot of alcohol. You always hear it, and it's, you know, certainly it's been portrayed that way in the movies, but it's not something that's generally true. Uh, but a lot of people still think it is. Joining me is uh, Brian Wolf, who is uh, from the uh, Clarion University what, Drug and Alcohol Program yes. here. And you, you may have seen, we're going to get into some of this stuff later. Um, what camera? Can I look at it on one? Um, Look at all these, these free things they have here. These, I'm sure you've seen the mouse pads. Our, our newsroom is uh, bedecked in these mouse pads, and there's all kind of other stuff. We'll talk about it later. But first of all, tell us about this College Isn't About Alcohol campaign. Um, actually, we're just trying to get out that uh, college alcohol consumption is actually much lower than what college students think. Um, as you can see on different mugs and whatnot, you know, zero to five drinks per week is what most college students drink. Well, uh, one, my question is, if you look at it, like I said, mm -hmm. it, people think everybody's drinking, mm -hmm. um, but it's not true. I, and, and there's been surveys mm -hmm. that have come out that, that are proving that. So what's the stand that you guys are taking? I mean, why is all of a sudden we have this aggressive push? Okay, uh, well, the last 10 years at other universities, other statewide and uh, private universities, have tried this campaign that has decreased their alcohol consumption on campus. So uh, we thought we'd try it here at Clarion University because it hasn't been tried before. 
So I hear it's part of this idea of social norming. Can you yes. explain that? Uh, yes, yeah, social norming is uh, pretty much you, we survey and uh, we, we come up with different gimmicks. You know, put on pens and whatnot, uh, mugs, whatnot. Uh, it's just it's just try to get out, try to get the facts out to all the college university students that uh, um, you know drinking is less than what people perceive it to be. Does the campaign go beyond students? Uh, yeah, we uh, we're putting on different uh, advertisements on the radio. You're gonna soon hear. We just uh, Wednesday we recorded a few commercials to be played so the community can hear them and whatnot. Uh, just it's. The main main focus on it is that college isn't about alcohol, it's about other things. It's about like choices and education and whatnot. So here it is, you know, spring 2002 and we've been kind of, we're hit with all of this yeah. stuff. Yeah. How, what's, the, has this been in the works for a while? I mean, where all of a sudden, my, my question is, where's the money coming from for this? Okay. How is this all coming about? Um, well, Darlene Hartle, who's the, now the head of the Drug and Alcohol Counseling here at Clinton University, she received a grant from uh, the LCB and the LCE, and we're trying to use that money to promote different things like this. And we also are doing other things on the weekends. We have an alcohol-free initiative weekends, which is uh, different clubs and different uh, fraternity sororities and whatnot are sponsoring different activities for our students to come out and uh, socialize without alcohol. What are any? Of, um, what are some of those? Do you know? Well. Uh, Take, for instance, the fraternities. It was supposed to happen uh, two weeks ago, but we didn't have any snow. They were supposed to have a, a sled riding party, oh, but it did not happen because okay. we didn't have snow. But uh, if you listen to the radio, they'll all be uh, advertised and whatnot. Or if you have a question when they will be, they'll be on the student senate. You can go check with them. They have a listing of all when, when they'll be and where at. How does this, you know, you were saying that, the, that uh, you want the community to know. Is part of this getting rid of that stereotype that yeah, I was talking yeah, about? Yeah, we're trying to, yeah, get rid of that stereotype of like, you know, animal house, you know, right. partying, drinking, whatnot. And, and even for students, I, yeah. you know, is this geared maybe toward freshmen or is this geared toward? It's, it's geared towards freshmen through senior and even the incoming freshmen. We uh, are going to talk about it, you know, at the at different, when they come in for orientation and whatnot, so. We're, Trying oh, to target. Oh, really part of, it's part of our we're, we're gonna we're trying to yeah we're gonna revise we're gonna try to revise the orientation oh. program and whatnot we're trying to come up with new ideas uh, we're working with outside resources and whatnot how many how many there how many are there of you uh, working on this uh, well actually it's uh, Darlene Hartle and then uh, I'm a co-op and then there's another co-op Tim and uh, then we work with Bacchus which is uh, the alcohol okay. program here on campus. Huh, that's interesting. So uh, the stuff, uh, this is what we see everywhere. How yes. do we get, how do we go about? Let's take take me on a tour through some of this stuff. I I have to get this out. Yeah, it's I'm gonna you give a tour of some of this stuff, and I'm gonna get this out because I want to show well, it. We we have the you know the like coffee mug, up. whatnot. We have the mouse pad. I can't. We got pencils. Well, highlighters. I can't open it. <laughs> I'll show right. it through the back. Uh, you know. Sticky notes. Keychains. Keychains, another keychain. I don't know if we can Water get a, bottle. If I can, we can get a close-up. Um, no, here, look here. It's a little it's a little VW bug car that lights up there for a keychain. And I said, I see these mouse pads everywhere. They're all throughout mm. our newsroom. Yes. Yeah, they'll, mouse... they'll be on uh, all the community, like all the computer centers and whatnot on campus, oh, okay. too. So they'll be everywhere. How can we how can we get some of this stuff? We're going for all ourselves. right. Uh, on February 19th in the Rotundra, it's from 10 to 2 o'clock. We will be doing a safer spring break. It's uh, something to do right before everyone leaves for spring break. The state health department will be there, giving out free hand uh, free lotion, sunscreen, hmm. and whatnot, uh, and talking about skin care and whatnot. And then we have the AIDS Alliance coming. They're going to bring free condoms and whatnot, and talk about STDs and. And then we'll also have a table set up with all these gimmicks and everything. And then if you have questions about anything about alcohol, drugs, anything, we'll, we can hopefully answer them for you. And then also on uh, the 25th is the Wellness Fair, which is in... And it's in April. Yeah, Everyone it's in April. Yeah, tipping, that. yeah, with massages and whatnot. Sure. And we'll also have a stand set up there, and we're going to have an alcohol jeopardy going, where, uh, you know, different questions, and you can build your questions up, and then the, the higher the question, the better prize you'll, you'll get and whatnot. Hmm. So. Fascinating. Well, Brian, thank you for joining us. All right, us. thank you, Mark. Uh, it's definite, definitely some interesting stuff here. And you, I mean, I've seen some of this stuff out. I'm going to take some of it home with me. All right. <laughs> thank you, thank for you very us. much.
We're going to go ahead and take a break. Uh, we're switching gears, staying uh, on the Clarion University campus, talking to Earth Science Professor uh, Dr. Tony Vega about the CD he is releasing. My first question is, what is an Earth Science Professor doing putting out a CD? That's coming up next. Stay with us. I'll take Simmons. Yeah. Give me Jones. Anderson. Smith. Lightfoot. Bishop. Hernandez. Swifka. Harris. Lavender. Uh, Peavy. Yes. In the game of life, you've got a much better chance at getting picked for a cool job with great pay if you take algebra, geometry, and calculus. You need to know how math can improve your future. Demand it. Call NACME. We'll tell you. Wardrobe for some TV5 news stock provided by Fashion Bug, located in the Clarion Mall. Whether you're looking for junior trendy or fashion for women, they have it all with many different styles. Fashion Bug also offers a wide selection of accessories. Fashion Bug is located in the Clarion Mall, just off of Exit 62 of Interstate 80. Open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. till 9 p.m. and Sunday from noon to 5. This portion of programming is sponsored by Reese Brothers, located in Drake Square Building in Oil City. Reese Brothers offers competitive hourly wage, plus daily bonuses, flexible scheduling, company sponsored health benefits, and paid professional training. Call today at 1 800 365 3500, extension 684, or 677 9236 for your personal interview or stop by and visit the Drake Square Building. Reese Brothers. Where integrity and technology connect. Hi, everybody. I'm Brandy. How would you like to give hope to millions of the world's children? UNICEF, the United Nations Children's Fund, is saving lives in over 140 countries by providing kids with medicine, clean water, nutrition, and education. With your help, UNICEF can make a huge difference in our world. For more information, call one 800 F.O.R. Kids. Thank you. Welcome back. I'm Mark Despotakis on this uh, experimental night here at TV5, a live edition of Feedback. First time ever. Going smoothly so far, so we're hoping it continues. Joining me now is Dr. Tony Vega. Uh, if you're a Clarence University student, you may have actually had his class, his earth science class. But uh, he's not here as an earth science professor tonight. He is here as a recording artist. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So my big question is, what is an earth science professor doing recording a CD? Um, it's just a hobby. I've been involved in uh, music as a hobby since I was about 12 years old and um, played in many, many bands over the years and um, sort of just got to a point where I wanted to release my own music. Um, I didn't want anyone else's input into what it should be, uh, what it should sound like, and set about to uh, to record my own CD. So what's what sparked it at this point in time that you said, hey, I've, now is when I want to go out and, uh, and do the CD? Enough money to actually invest in digital <laughs> recording is, is equipment at my house is basically what it was. That and um, also um, I bought a, uh, a new uh, acoustic guitar a couple of years ago and um, had been an electric guitar player for 20 years and finally bought an acoustic and, and thought, well, let's see what I can do with it, and started to make music that was very different from the music that I played live with bands. Most of that was um, sort of on the heavy side, blues rock um, and alternative, and the acoustic basically brought out a little bit of um, sort of my musical alter ego, if you will, and I started to make music that I always say that my parents actually like. <laughs> and um, so that, that just sort of led me into the direction of making uh, instrumental music um, on my own and, and I invested in some digital recording equipment and a year and a half later had the CD finished. So. Well, the interesting thing is you were telling me before that uh, you did a good bit of this on your own. All of it. How? I couldn't even imagine. You're producing a CD. I mean, how? take us through the process of that. Well, you first need a song. Uh, <laughs> writing a song uh, in some cases was very easy. In some other cases, it was extraordinarily difficult. Um, once I, I wrote the song, I had to figure out how to use the digital, digital recording equipment. Um, that took a little while. I basically uh, figured out how to use it figured out how to get good sounds on it as well. Um, I always thought, uh, not knowing much about recording, 
that you basically put a microphone in front of an amp or plug a guitar directly into a uh, recording console, off you go, and it's going to sound great. Not the case. Um, I would spend hours and hours just tweaking a sound just for maybe five or ten seconds of music overall. But um, figured out slowly how to use everything, um, figured out how to get good sounds, uh, recorded the songs. Um, I w what I would do is record a basic rhythm guitar track, and then I would put uh, melodies and leads and so forth over the top of it, just uh, basically play back the, the rhythm um, and layer instruments on top of it. And um, that's basically what, what uh, everyone does uh, in the recording industry, only I was doing all of the instruments, instruments, instruments myself. Mm -hmm. And um, once you get the song finished, then uh, mixing and mastering is another uh, issue. It's another process that uh, you have to, to make all the sounds balance. Um, you have to have uh, the main guitar on top, the, the rhythm guitars below, the percussion below that, etc. And, um, and once you have, have it like you want it, then uh, you basically just export it out of the digital uh, recording uh, software, and you can burn it right down to a CD. And that's what I did. All it, what usually what takes twelve songs on here. Usually what takes artists, I mean, you know, an artist will go in and record something, and then there's how many people behind the scenes, right. that, and you ended up doing it all right. yourself. Yeah, um, I don't have a staff, so <laughs> you are your staff. I am my staff. Uh, you can listen to some of, of the uh, CD on mp3.com, right. and I took a listen to some of the things today, and um, it, it's fascinating. I mean, it's fascinating what you can do with a, a digital. Uh, recording program. Mm -hmm. Explain MP3 to us how this okay. works that you have, you know, I can go and I can get two songs on the internet, but right. here is 12 here. How does the whole partnership work? Um, MP3 is, is a site that originally started by making um, known artists available over the internet. If you wanted to download a song, um, the, the, the normal song is in a, a WAV format, which is about, uh, each song is probably around 60 or 70 megabytes. Um, that's too big to transport over the internet. So MP3 is a technology that reduces that down to about three or four megabytes for each song. So you can transport it over the net within about 15 minutes if you have a 28.8 modem or something. Um, what they do uh, is um, they also became a site for independent musicians like myself wanting to get their music out. And uh, basically I just uh, sign on with MP3. Um, they give me uh, space on their on their website to produce my own website, uh, which features the songs in the album. Uh, they take care of all the billing, all of uh, all the monetary uh, aspects of everything. I give them the songs, I give them the graphics, I design the website, and uh, they make you have to make at least two songs available for free. Mm -hmm. So the first two songs on the on the CD are actually available for free. Anybody can go on the site mp3.com, look up my name, Anthony Vega. Um, if you do Tony Vega, it's actually a Latin uh, pop star. So, um, <laughs> but Anthony Vega is uh, my site on there, and um, you can download the first two songs as samples. And if you wanted to buy the rest of the CD, you just click on buy the CD, and um, you buy it for I think it's 11.98 for the CD, and um, they get about 95 percent of that. Oh really? <laughs> oh yeah. Wow, I, that much. So um, yeah, I make about uh, well, probably not 95, but I, I actually make about two dollars a CD. Wow. So huh. uh, and that's actually typical for um, people in the music industry. The artist actually gets a very small percentage of, of uh, a CD. Everything else is production and profit for the company producing it. How long has this been available on the internet? Um, this has just been. I made this available probably about three days before Christmas. And how's it, uh, I mean, uh, what's recognition like thus far um, the internet? I think about 160 or so people have downloaded the free songs. Uh, I wish 160 people had bought the <laughs> CD, but they, they tend to stop there. Um, I've sold a few, um, but not as many as I'd like. Hopefully we get um, some clarion people out there to... Buy the CD. <laughs> Support, uh, this will go to Is my... Is bonus uh, points in your class, or no? No, we could work something <laughs> out. Um, I don't know. Um, it's it's my uh, college uh, fund for my children, actually. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> if that's the case, I'll be going uh, to the community college. Right. <laughs> um, more aspirations beyond this? I mean, obviously yeah. this is, you know, like you said, right. it's a hobby, but where do you go from here? I am working on a, a, another CD, a solo CD, and um, actually there's a, a student, um, Chris Spruill, here. He's, he's getting ready to graduate and um, in the summer, and we're going to try and uh, do a collaboration and put out a CD with both of us. So if we can do it in that amount of time, I'd really, uh, 
I'd be really be excited about it. Uh, he's a great guitar player, and um, this took me a year and a half, so we'll really have to hustle to get something out probably by the end of the summer. But if we can get the songs recorded, then I can take my time mixing and mastering and so forth. So, what we'll do you see. say to people out there who are saying, "Man, I've always wanted to be a you can do a it. music person." You know, what, what's what's your advice to them? Where you know, go to something like MP3. Um, first, uh, learn how to record. Get your songs in a digital format, and yeah, MP3 is a great great site to do uh, to do this through because it doesn't cost uh, money up front. Mm -hmm. A lot of the other sites, comparable sites, they actually want X amount of dollars up front to support your music and to sell your CDs, and MP3 does it on a CD by CD basis, um, which is, a, is, you actually get a little less profit from each CD um, because they do that, but you don't have to pay hundreds of dollars in advance. Right. So it's worth it. Um, right. MP3.com, type in Anthony Vega. In the search box in right. MP3. If and you want Latin music, type in Tony, Tony Vega. Tony Vega, that's but right. Go, but go for Anthony Vega. Mm -hmm. Pick up the CD. Like I said, I listened to some of it on the uh, internet today. Some good stuff. It's diverse. Diverse. Thanks for coming down. All right. Thanks for having We're me. We're going to take a break. Feedback continues after this. Programming was made possible through a grant by Fox's Pizza Den. Fox's Pizza Den is located on Old Route 66 in Clarion and offers all-day delivery. Phone 226-5555. That's 226-5555. Fox's Pizza Den is open seven days a week for your convenience. Phone at 226-5555. Do you want complete coverage of local, state, national, and international news as it happens? Good evening, everyone, and welcome to TV5 News Live. Tune in to Clarion's very own TV5 News Live for complete coverage of the Clarion area and our world. TV5 News crews join with crews from the world's news leader, CNN, to provide complete coverage of the day's events. With advanced satellite capability, TV5 News can bring you the latest news as it happens. So tune in every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday evenings for Clarion's very own TV5 News Live. On September 11th, America faced terrorist attacks of the worst kind. Innocent lives were lost, and a sad cloud was cast over this great nation. These acts were intended to cause fear among all Americans, including our children. But we cannot let that happen. There are things we can do to help our kids. Talk with them. Listen to them. Tell them they're safe and that they're loved. God bless you, and God bless America. This portion of the program was made possible through a grant from Clarion Hospital. Clarion Hospital is located off of Exit 9 of Interstate 80. Clarion Hospital offers outpatient services, transitional care, as well as an emergency room open around the clock every day of the year. More than 400 employees and 80 physicians work to serve the community. Call the Clarion Hospital at 226-9500. Clarion Hospital, providing health care to Clarion County and surrounding communities since 1954. Welcome back to Feedback. That's all for tonight. I want to thank Brian Wolf and uh, Dr. Tony Vega uh, for joining us. It was a good show tonight, and we made it through. Look, we're still on the air. It's a live program. We've been live for an hour, and we made it through. Uh, next week, still working on some of the guests for you, but next Thursday is Valentine's Day. If you don't know, make sure you mark that in your calendar. Uh, we have something, inter I don't know if I want to give it away just yet, what we have, but it's something kind of interesting. It will be good for those of you who, who might not like Valentine's Day. At least one of the segments on the show is for those of you out there who don't like Valentine's Day. Uh, that's next Thursday. We will see you back here next Tuesday night at 7.30, and uh, don't forget to tune in to TV5 News with Kelly Esno and Autumn Gels next Tuesday at 7.00. Have a good night. Have a good weekend. I'm Mark Isotakis. We'll see you.